Welcome to our course activation function and in this part of our function we are going to learn about sigmoid function. So sigmoid function is actually uh, very familiar to everybody because this is also the kind of function that is used when we are talking about um, logistic regression wherein we separate and group different data points into two clusters or more depending on the objective of your study. So I believe that you will already know the shape of a sigmoid function. So it has this kind of shape. It's something like this. Okay, yeah. So sorry for this part. So it's, a, it's something like this. So it means to say when we have this kind of function or shape is that we have two separate points here. What do we mean by uh, two separate points? So from this part, we have what we call the inflection. Let me write here. So what's the meaning of inflection? Inflection is actually a part wherein we have the separation between one category and another category and usually this is 0 0.5 and this actually or this one is also very uh, true to um, sigmoid function when we're talking about neural network. So neural network and that's what we're going to understand more and more. This function and this shape would only be the result if we're going to follow this kind of formula. I think I don't need to make computation. I would like to leave that one to you. So having this formula, we would arrive at this particular um, shape of our function. And if we're going to get the derivative of our formula, then we can have this kind of shape, okay, something like that. So as you could see, um, using first the sigmoid function, its raw form or basic form, we would have an observation wherein at this particular point, it's going to be asymptotic. And if we are going to get the derivative of our function, then in this part, it's going to be asymptotic. And also in this part, it's going to be asymptotic. So we have the point from this case, from here, going to here. Now, maybe you would want to ask me, do these points would always be the same? Of course not, because we have this, what we call the domain. And this domain would say that our spread, our numbers would always be to the negative infinity and going to the positive infinity, which means to say that it's going to be like that here without any ending, and it's going to be like that without any ending. So as what I've said, it's going to be asymptotic on this side, and if we're going to get, again, the derivative of our function, then it's also going to be asymptotic to this side and going to this side. So which means to say that no matter how many points we're going to um, feed into our model, it's still going to be not touching this particular point here, which is at zero. So there is no such thing as zero in this case. So the range would always be between zero and one. And as what I've said, the inflection would happen at 0 0.5. Let me also share with you some of the concepts and um, points that we need to understand when we are talking about sigmoid function. First is, is that the function is monotonically increasing. Let me write here, monotonically increasing. Okay, increasing. And when it is decreasing, I mean when it is increasing, it, there is always a great possibility that it's going to be decreasing too. And in that case, it's also going to be continuously increasing. I mean decreasing. Okay. And one more thing that we need to understand about sigmoid function is that it is differentiable everywhere in the function. It is differentiable everywhere in the function. Okay, what do we mean when we say everywhere? So what do we mean when we say it is differentiable or differentiable everywhere in the function? Remember this that from the point here, going to the point here, there are a lot of values that we can see actually. And each one value or each value is unique. 
from each other to each other. So which means to say that um, we can never find any uh, two values that are the same. So which means to say that they are very differentiable. One is very close to the other group and one is very far to or far from the other group. And even if it is inside a certain group, for example, there is also what we call a centroid, okay? And the centroid will always mean that which particular point is really, really, really very close to this one as far as the distance is concerned and which one is um, at least farther from the other. So the question would be this, um, why do we use sigmoid function as a function in the neural network or even um, in deep learning? The very simple answer to that is that when a certain value is closer to one, then there is a great possibility that um, it's going to be activated. Of course, that's going to be. And if it is less than zero, I mean, when it's going to be zero or um, the more or, or, or the farther it is uh, to one, then there is a greater tendency that it's going to be deactivated. So the closer to zero would mean that it's going to be deactivated and the closer it is to one, it's going to be activated. Do you want to know more about this channel? Just click these cards. We do have a lot of free data science courses for free like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.